Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can balance chemical equations using Python. I'm going to use this Python package called CamPy. So here I am in CamPy's GitHub page. You have all the details, all the documentation here in the GitHub page. It has a very good doc documentation, so if you have any doubts, you can check this documentation or the link in the description below where you have a blog post about CamPy, specifically about balancing chemical equations with CamPy. CamPy can do many other things. CamPy has many other capabilities, as you can see here in these items. It can do numeric integration for chemical kinetics. It can solve equilibria. It, it has some relations useful in physical chemistry. But in this video, I'm going to show you only the balancing of chemical equations. So you have here all the instructions to perform the installation. You can install it using Conda or you can install it using pip. I've already installed it prior to the video, so let's go directly to the tutorial. So here I am in my VS Code. I'm using a Jupyter Notebook inside VS Code. The first thing I'm going to show you how you can create chemical substance inside CamPy. So from CamPy, you can import a class called sub substance. So now I can create, for example, a water molecule with substance dot from formula and passing the H2O string. So here we have the water molecule passing on the string H2O. You can assure that's actually the chemical formula for water, checking the composition, the mass, and the charge. So here we can ask for water.composition. This is an attribute. So here we have one representing the hydrogen atom and eight representing the oxygen atom. And we have the these numbers two and one showing that we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So this is a dictionary with the atomic number and the number of each element, the number of atoms of each element. Okay. We can also check the charge. So water dot charge. And as expected, we have here zero since it, it is a neutral molecule. And finally, we can check the mass. And here we have 18.015. And that's the expected molar mass for a water molecule. Concerning mass, you can use this mass attribute, but you can also use a molar mass method. And the difference is that this method gives you the molar mass with the unity. Under the hood, CamPy uses the quantities Python package that deals with unities, so you can build your code using unities and making sure that you are using all the correct unities in each case okay so you have the two the these two options the dot mass attribute and the dot molar mass method to work with molar masses one thing that i find really useful is the many ways that you can have the chemical representation for a given formula or for a given reaction that we are going to see soon so here i have a formula right we have here the water molecule and we have the water formula and i can export this formula in many ways so i can ask for a string representation ask for the attribute name so you have here the string representation but sometimes we are working with web pages and sometimes we are working with latex documents and we can ask for these representations so we have here water.html name, and this attribute gives you a HTML representation for this chemical formula. And we can also ask LaTeX name, and this is the LaTeX uh, representation for this formula. So I find this pretty useful since most of the time I'm writing for my blog or writing reports using LaTeX. So I use this attribute sometimes since I need them. So now that we know how to deal with chemical substance, how to deal with chemical formulas, let's take a look in chemical balancing. So from CamPy, import balance stoichiometry. So this is the function that we are going to use to balance our chemical equations. 
So let's start with this simple chemical equation, right? Here we have the combustion of acetylene, and this is the final equation, okay? It's, this is already balanced, but I'm going to show you how you can achieve this balancing using ChemPy. I'm going to create here a variable called R01, just to make sure that this is the first reaction that we are going to see. And what you need is call this function, this balance stoichiometry, and I'm going to pass two sets, okay? So I'm going to pass first, the first set with the reactants. So you have here acetylene and oxygen, and I'm going to pass another set, and these are going to be the products, okay? So I'm going to pass here CO2, carbon dioxide, and water, okay? So let's see what we have here in this variable. And we have here a tuple, okay? So this is a tuple with two other dicts, okay? So we have here the first other dict, and we have here the second other dict, okay? And each other dict has a reactant or a product Okay, the first one is for the reactants and the second one is for the products and their stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so we have here two for acetylene, five for oxygen, four for CO2, and two for water. Okay, so we have here the balancing and we have here the stoichiometric coefficients for each chemical substance. So, okay, we have here the stoichiometric coefficients and we have done the balancing, but sometimes it's more useful to have the final chemical equation, okay, of the final representation of the chemical equation in a more uh, useful way than these two other decks inside a tuple. So, how can we achieve this? We can use the reaction class, okay, so from compile import reaction. So what can we do with this class? We can unpack this tuple inside of this class, okay? Initializing this class actually with this tuple items. So we can pass here reaction, and here we can use the asterisk symbol to unpack the tuple that uh, it's assigned to this variable. So here we have the final result. Here we have uh, more chemical representation, let's put this way, for our reaction. And we see that each coefficient is uh, in the right position before uh, in, the in front of the chemical substance. So you have two moles of acetylene plus five moles of oxygen reacting to give you four moles of CO2 and two moles of water. I'm going to assign this result to a variable and I'm going to call R01 bow just to make it clear that's the first reaction balanced. Okay, so here we have the same result. When we were dealing with substance, I've shown you that you can get representations for those substances like a string, an HTML for, uh, formula, or a LaTeX formula. You can do the same thing for a reaction. So I can ask for a string representation of this reaction with this string method. So here we have this string method. This is the uh, this is a method for this reaction class, okay? And we also have methods for HTML and LaTeX, so, but these methods, they worked in a uh, slightly different way than the methods that we've seen before. These HTML and LaTeX methods, they need a dictionary of all the substance in the reaction. We can see here in the docs, so if I ask for the documentation for the HTML, method, you can see here that we need the substance as a dictionary. So we have to provide this dictionary, okay? So let's understand what we have to do here. So the first thing I need to do is to get all the substance that take part in this reaction. So I'm going to ask here for the keys in this reaction. So we have here all the substance, the acetylene, the CO2, water, and oxygen. Okay, and now I have to build a dictionary for this substance. Okay, and I'm going to use here a dict comprehension. I'm going to call this R01 substance 
And I'm going to use the keys like this, substance dot from formula. And I'm going to get each key for key in R01 ball dot keys. Okay, so for those that have never seen a dictionary comprehension before, uh, it's actually a for loop in a one lines for loop. Okay, so I'm passing for each of these keys and I'm getting the uh, re substance representation. Okay, using the substance from dot from formula that we've seen before. Let's take a look in our dictionary. So we have here for each molecule, its substance representation using the CAMPI substance class. Okay, this is something that these methods need to create the HML and LaTeX representations. Okay, so now I can pass this dictionary for these methods. So R01 balance dot LaTeX, and I'm going to pass this dictionary, and here we have the LaTeX representation for this chemical reaction. And we can do the same thing. So I'm going to copy and paste here. But instead of LaTeX, I'm going to ask for HML. And here we have the HML representation for this chemical equation, for this chemical reaction. Okay. And I think this is really useful. I use this a lot since I have some web pages and works related with chemistry. And sometimes I want uh, LaTeX or HML representation of a uh, formula or chemical reaction. Tempi also can deal with redox equilibria. It can also balance redox equilibria, and this is pretty useful. Okay, so let's get this equilibrium, for example. So we have here the potassium permanganate reaction with hydrogen peroxide. And we know that we have here two half reactions. We have the permanganate being reduced to manganese 2, and we have the oxidation of peroxide being oxidized to O2. Okay, so we can represent each half reaction in Campi. So the first thing is from Campi import equilibrium. So I'm going to import this class, and I'm going to represent each half reaction. So this is the second reaction that we are studying, and I'm going to create here the reduction half reaction. So I'm going to call here equilibrium. And as before, I'm going to pass all the reactants and all the products, okay? But now I'm going to pass them already balanced. So I'm going to pass a dictionary for the reactants and a dictionary for the products. So we, here we have the reactants. We have the permanganate ion, and this is only one. And we have the hydronium ion with eight. And we have here the electrons. We have here five electrons. These are the reactants, okay? And we have now the products. We have here NN2+, plus, only one. And we have here the water molecule with four as a coefficient. Usually these half reactions, you can get them from a table, a table of uh, potentials. So usually that's what you have in your hands. We have You have all the half reactions, and then you have to balance them, eliminating the electrons of each half reaction, okay? So this is the reduction half reaction. Now let's take a look in the oxidation half reaction. We have here, R02 ox for the oxidation half reaction. Okay, so we are going to do the same thing. We are going to have two dictionaries. Okay, so we are going to have here the reactant as the hydrogen peroxide, only one. And now we have the products. We have here oxygen, the oxygen molecule, only one. Hydronium ion, we have two of them. And now we have the electron, we have two electrons, okay? So we have here the reduction of reaction and the oxidation of reaction, okay? Let's run this cell. Let's take a look in each one of them. So we have here the reduction of reaction and we have here the oxidation of reaction. So if you're going to balance this system by hand, we are going to eliminate all the electrons, and that's what we are going to do using Campi. We are going to order Campi to eliminate all the electrons. 
for this, we are going to use the eliminate method. Okay, so I'm going to create here a variable. So I'm going to call E for Fs for electron coefficients. And I'm going to call here equilibrium.eliminate. And this method has two parameters. The first one, it's a tuple of or a terrible of the half reactions. So I'm going to pass here the reduction half reaction and the oxidation half reaction. And I'm going to tell what's going to be eliminated. In this case, the electrons. Let's see the results. So we have here the coefficients of each electron in each reaction. So now I can create this second reaction as a balanced chemical reaction. I'm going to define here a new variable so that we can have this second reaction balanced. And I'm going to get the reduction of reaction and multiply it for the first coefficient. So here we have like this, because this is a list and I'm going to get this first, first coefficient. So here is what I'm doing here. I'm getting this first coefficients and multiplying by the first half reaction for multiplying by the reduction half reaction. And I'm going to do the same thing now for the oxidation half reaction. And for this half reaction, I'm going to get the second coefficient. And let's take a look here. We can have here the balance reaction. So as you can see, we have here no electrons. So all the electrons were eliminated. And as before, you can get this reaction in a string format, HTML format, or LaTeX formula. And we need to pass a dictionary with all the substance. So I'm going to copy what we've done here before. So I'm going to copy here the same logic that we've done before for the first reaction. We are going to do now for the second reaction. So now it's the second reaction here. So I'm going to put two here and the same thing here. Now we are looking for the second reaction. Here we have all the substance for this second reaction. And now I can ask for the representation as a LaTeX formula. So I'm going to use this LaTeX method and pass the substance. And this is the representation using LaTeX of this chemical reaction. Okay, and we can do the same thing here for HML. So I'm going to replace LaTeX with HML. And we have here the HML representation for this chemical reaction. So this is it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. I know Kenpai can do many other things, but I am going to show Kenpai in many other videos. In this video, I just show you how you can balance chemical equations using Kenpai. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I see you in the next video.